Hello, hello. Thank you for joining our session. Uh, today we would like to uh, do the presentation about the soft S-Bomb automation making compliance effortless by consuming, enriching, and managing suitable materials. Okay, so I am a Koki Hama. I'm from a Toshiba Corporation, and I, my main job is uh, touching the uh, S-Bomb for our compliance and license. And? Yeah, my name is Arun. I'm uh, leading the open source compliance activities at uh, Siemens Healthineers, based out of Bangalore, India. So uh, today we uh, would like to do the presentation. Okay, let's start. Uh, from at first, I would like to do the explain the uh, general topic for the S bombs. This is today's content. At first, I'd like to explain the challenges in management software dependencies, and so then uh, talk about the consuming and rating and managing software available materials in the SW three hundred sixty. And first, I would like to describe the automated dependency management with S bombs. Okay, so first one is the training managing software dependencies. So uh, maybe, uh, so if you uh, develop some software, so you have uh, some problems about dependencies, uh, for example, so if you use a big pro, if you develop the very big project, uh, you have a s several issues such as uh, uh, one software use for read it on numerous dependencies and their type is very different. Uh, so sometimes using a C languages, sometimes it is a completely different computer languages. Uh, it is difficult to manage all. And of course, uh, if you uh, develop the big software product, you need to check every vulnerability or license issues. However, so uh, recently many people uh, so talked about the S bombs, and so I also think S bomb is very important because if you uh, develop the your software with S bombs, uh, you can check many information with your products. Without the S bombs, you can check only a very limited information. However, if you use S bombs you can check almost all information for your products. So s is very useful for verifying vulnerability and licenses. Okay, so and I would like to, uh, how to manage s -bombs. Yeah, so if you manage s in your organizations, uh, it is difficult to manage them uh, because uh, due to the potential use of a different management methods or tools by each department or products. So if you have the problems about the rogue project, uh, but different product or different department manage uh, different s form tools, you cannot find which software or which product use a rogue project. And the second difficulty is the s -bomb format. Yeah, I like JSON format. However, many people need to use the s -bombs like legal department people. In this case, if you use s -bomb for managing your software product, you need to check JSON itself. Is it really good for everyone? And so the other different uh, program is that uh, uh, at in these times, uh, many, many uh, s -bomb tools uh, exist. However, uh, different tools return different results, so, uh, so you need to consider which result is better for you. So it's a very uh, difficult point uh, in, s -bomb in management s -bomb in your organizations. However, so uh, to address these challenges, efforts are needed to promote and centralize management across the organization, introduce tools to improve readability of s -bomb and ensure compatibility across tools. So uh, I would like to say 
SW360 is very helpful to solve these problems. Okay, so what is SW360? SW360 is an open source software uh, by the Linux Eclipse Foundation. Uh, it is a license under the EPL2 license that provides both a web application and repository to collect, organize, and make available information about software components. Each system is a central hub for software components in organizations. SW360 allows for S1 import export and tracking component used by a project and product and integrate security vulnerability tools uh, such as variable code and uh, maintaining license obligations and enforcing a policies in your company and so generating legal docu documentations. So the basic concept of the SW360 is the central link maps. So uh, if you uh, register the different information related to the SMOMs uh, on the different tools, you may not find the good results. However, if your data centralized into the one repository or one database, you can manage it easily. So this is an uh, example data of the uh, SW360 uh, we can manage. Uh, now SW360 manages the component name or categories and the types like the open source codes or languages uh, like a C language, uh, Rust or Python and software platform and operating system and main licenses and uh, operating system or CPID like this. Uh, you can centralize the register SVM data, uh, both uh, GUI, and of course you can uh, register data by the API, which is W360 officially supported. Uh, so before I would like to do the demo about the SW360, uh, I would like to um, mention the SW360 news. Uh, Last month, uh, let's w 360 released version 18. And so from these versions, officially uh, s uh, import and export and view function uh, supported. And so uh, uh, from this version, uh, you can also build the SW360 uh, by Docker Compose. It is very helpful, uh, so sometimes people don't want to uh, instruct with uh, many times, but so uh, if you can use Docker Compose, you can set SW360 in on your server very quickly. Uh, it's not all, and additional feature also included uh, for a version 18. And now uh, we are ongoing development, uh, so we are transitioning to a uh, new GUI uh, frameworks. Uh, now we are using a library for the frameworks, the frameworks, but uh, we are completely, uh, we try to completely change uh, React uh, from the library to React.js for frameworks. So if you are familiar with uh, React, uh, please join our community. We are always supported and welcome your contributions for the new GUI frameworks. Okay, from now I would like to do the demo how to manage S form in SPDX case. So today uh, I would like to do the use uh, import S forms about the official examples. Uh, so if you uh, go to this page uh, on the SW360, uh, which you manage, uh, so from you can find the these pages upload the S bombs. And so uh, for explanation, I, I would like to use the uh, official SPDX example on the SPDX website. So this includes a lot of information already. So I think it is very good for doing a demo. 
So uh, after, if you uh, set the upload, uh, upload S bombs, you can get uh, this kind of result. And so if you go to the uh, SW360, uh, you can get the result on this GIs. Uh, now support it SPDX 2.2 and the SPDX write format for managing uh, S bombs. So uh, almost all data uh, SPDX example are registered like this. Uh, so like uh, snippet information or the uh, other information related to the SPDX. And at the same time, SW360 supported SPDX, right? If you cannot manage all information, uh, you can just register as, uh, SPDX, right, information. OK, and uh, after uh, my course pick around, I do the demo about the Cyclone DX. So <laughs> I skipped out this time about this demo. Okay, so and after that, I would like to do explain about automated dependency management. So uh, important, uh, generating S bomb is very important. However, at the same time, so you need to automate it, these procedures for uh, five reasons. First is efficiency, uh, automation significantly reduces the time and effort required to generate and manage S bombs. It eliminates manual errors and includes the speed of operations. Second, accuracy. Automated tools can accurately identify software components and their associated vulnerabilities. This leads to more accurate risk assessments. Third one is a secure scalability, as the number of software components includes uh, manual S generation and the management became impractical. Automation allows for scalability. Fourth, compliance. Uh, automated S bomb tools can help ensure compliance with the various software license and regulations. Uh, so fifth is the security. Timely identification and resolution of security vulnerability is crucial. Automation helps in early detection and migration of these vulnerabilities. So for solving these problems, I propose to combine things used as SW360 and ORT uh, open source review toolkits. Uh, if you both, if you use both, uh, it's these systems allows for the automation of the S problems. So what is ORT? Uh, I would like to explain. The ORT is a uh, uh, force of policy automation and orchestration circuit, uh, which you can use to manage your open source software dependency. And so you can find some strategic, safe, and efficient manners. And now uh, ORD has an uh, integration feature for SW360 already. So through the uh, open source review toolkit, you can upload ORD analyzer result to the your SW360. And so use SW360 metadata curious as input for ORD analyzers. And start stores ORD scanner readers in SW360 for reuse in future scans. This is the basic uh, uh, images for the s automation systems. Uh, from your source code repositories, uh, you can get the license or any kind of dependency of our result, uh, which ORT returns. So uh, from ORT, you can find some uh, license information or files or dependencies. And so at the same time, uh, using the ORT uh, integration feature, you can set the SW360, you can set the data to SW360 automatically. Then if the data already exists in SW360, you can use some curation data for uh, reducing the time uh, or reducing the registration times. And so, of course, uh, sometimes uh, you need to add some information to SW360. 
uh, for example, if you want to add the, your own system source code mm -hmm. information to the SW360, you can add it by uh, manually. And uh, of course, if you have the codes and data for SMOS, uh, you can also this data to SW360. Lately, uh, if for protecting uh, supply chains, and if you want to deliver SBOMs, you can select the uh, Cyclone DX or SPDX. Uh, so you uh, made the SBOMs uh, for your customers with SW360s. And so, yeah, it's uh, almost all, but so I think, uh, just in my idea, but if we add uh, some vulnerability system to add this, uh, it is better to manage for SBOMs. So uh, in near future, I would like to uh, collaborate other vulnerability systems, like uh, vulnerability codes. Okay, that's all from me, uh, from this time. <laughs> yeah, um, am I audible? At the back, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions on this part of the session, maybe you can go now, or if it is fine, I'll proceed with mine. Okay, I'll proceed with mine. So, uh, just introducing myself again for the people who joined late. My name is Arun. I work for Siemens Eldenius out of uh, Bangalore, India, and I lead the software secure development and compliance activities at uh, Eldenius. So. Um, you have heard about what Software 360 is, and uh, you know to go a little bit back on the history. Uh, it was created around 2014 at, at Siemens, and uh, initially uh, Bosch and Siemens were uh, collaborating on this tool. And uh, later, during the time, uh, Bosch had other plans, and uh, you know we we gave some part of the code to ORT and some part of the code to Software 360. And right now, the major contributors or maintainers are Siemens and Siemens Heldenius, Toshiba, uh, Carriad, and uh, we have a few other uh, contributors also. So uh, how many of you in this crowd have used or is using Software 360? Okay, so I understand the, the house full is for the curious minds. You know, I, I hope you would uh, test this app application quite soon. So um, in the recent times, you, all of you are aware about the SBOM requirements that came in. And uh, this brought in a bigger challenge at Siemens because uh, historically our policy was to clear the source code of all the components that was being used. And at the time of implementing this tool, uh, it was implemented for a more of a waterfall model of engineering and uh, it was working fine. You know, people used to enter manually the components that they could identify. And in recent times, you know, you know how fast the development world have changed and uh, the system was not built to scale up to its current requirements in the DevOps. So this new challenge of um, identifying the consumption model like, you know, through package managers and, uh, you know, Siemens being a, an old company, we have a lot of old code in C, C++ and a lot of the package managers were not used historically, but now the shift is happening and we have new requirements and it's all you know, coming together with the new regulations also. So we had to devise a new approach where we wanted to capture the package information and the source information and how it is related to the project that we are make building in Healthineers. So just to go through the compliance workflow, this is uh, the internal compliance workflow which is modeled based on the open chain compliance workflow. Uh, where identification, registration, review assessment, verification and documentation are the core parts of the workflow. So today, uh, I would be focusing on the registration and review assessment part uh, because that is where the, the software 360 is uh, used in conjunction with Fossology. Um, so uh, earlier you have heard about integrating ORT into the uh, pipeline. So in Siemens, we have a, a slightly different approach. I mean, uh, we, we don't use ORT right now, but we are kind of uh, liberal in terms of the SEA tools that can be used for identification or analysis of your code base. And uh, the 
small part that we introduced there is uh, right now it is an internal tool which we plan to open source sometimes in the future is an SBOM enricher. So uh, we have allowed like anybody is free to use any tools that uh, they feel capable of analyzing their repo and creating an SBOM. And we have a Siemens standard BOM which is based on Cyclone DX format. So that is like 100% Cyclone DX plus some customizations for uh, Siemens requirements. So uh, the only requirement we have placed on the development teams is that whatever tool you use, uh, as long as your generated SBOM adheres to the standard SBOM format, then it would be, uh, it can be imported into Software 360 uh, without any issues. So uh, we do have the use case for both formats, but currently the priority is given for Cyclone DX because our standard BOM is based on Cyclone DX. But in our use case, SPDX would also uh, be later uh, brought in. And for this matter, we had to uh, slightly change the current architecture or the data structure of Software 360. So we introduced something called Package Portlet. I would, I would uh, talk about it in a minute. And uh, all of these in integrations of for review and assessment, uh, we do it with Phosology. And both in, in, in Phosology, we also support both the formats for uh, the certain output documents that we require. So internal compliance policy requirements. So we have set up these three points, like source repositories should be identified for all OSS binary packages consumed. And all open source software components is to be subjected to a license clearing at file level. And packages should be automatically mapped to the corresponding release version of the component. So this is not always possible. Uh, not all the open source communities or repositories maintain a release structure. Sometimes it is just the master branch and they only change the versions for the packages that they generate out of it. Uh, but generally, if there is a version, we also we want to clear the source of that corresponding version. So this is the uh, basic compliance requirements from our organization. And to meet that, we have defined uh, these three aspects in, in, in the business context or in Software 360 context. So what is a component? So component is the top hierarchical uh, structure, top element in the hierarchical structure, and which is uh, usually map to the source repository and we treat the VCS URL, version control system URL as the unique identifier for a component. So, and then uh, there is a reason for we using that because two components can have the same name and then we want to uh, identify if, if, if two components have the same name. The next check that we do is who is the manufacturer or who is the vendor. So based on that, a new component would be created. And even if it is the same manufacturer and same component, uh, there could be a difference in terms of licenses. Say, for example, OpenSSL. They change licenses from OpenSSLA to uh, Apache. So in that case, we would have one component with the OpenSSLA license until version 1.xr, uh, and then another new component with the changed uh, license information. So that is the top level of the hierarchy. Coming next is, as I told earlier, where there is a release uh, properly maintained, uh, this would be the component release. So we create a component and if there is a release available, we nest it under that component release. So this was the current structure or uh, until now. So in the new model, uh, we have introduced the package level which is always linked to a component release. So this is like mostly used when there is a non-modified uh, consumption model directly from the package uh, repositories. So as an example here, I have given Angular. So you can see the GitHub repo Angular as the uh, component and its uh, particular version 16.2.3 as a package. And when it comes to the NPM uh, repository, you see Angular slash core where they have pointed to the repository Angular. So this would be the structure uh, in how Software 360, uh, it would be modeled in the three hierarchical structure. So. I mean, this is just a pictorial representation of what I just explained. It's just the uh, how a component and a component release is uh, mapped. And this is a top-down approach where a component is created first, then a release is created. And the new model, we have the 
releases, the component and the packages coming in. So the difference is, uh, the creation is kind of uh, bottoms up. So first, a package is created during the import of a Cyclone DX SBOM based on the unique package URL and then it automatically figures out based on the VCS URL information, the component and the release. So once a component is created, the next time it gets uh, reused. So uh, just to make the understanding easy, it's an example of NuGet and uh, how it appears in the NuGet repository where it refers to a source repository which is uh, the GitHub and the what, is, what developers use is the uh, NuGet package and we need to clear the source repository for the security and compli license compliance requirements. So uh, the major savings in terms of compliance effort here is uh, in the olden model we were forced to clear around 31 components and create 31 clearing reports. So in the new model when we perform this mapping the effort reduces to just one. So all the binaries which are referring to the same repository, uh, we can go ahead with just one clearing report of that repository. And uh, you know, according to your requirements, you know, you could implement certain methodologies where you can continuously track the development or the changes in the repository and then you know, continue reusing the report. So there is a significant savings of effort for compliance activities because uh, it's very rare that uh, licenses changes between minor releases. So this is the package portlet. Uh, you might not have seen the third portlet there in the earlier demo. So this is how it displays and it's a complete standalone one where you can search based on the package manager type etc and the name of the package and the release which it is linked to based on the VCS URL and uh, the licenses. So the, all these informations are collected from the uh, SBOM that is imported. I will show a demo right now on this. So this is where we can import an SBOM. So we select uh, from the project. So when you're doing it first time, you can do it from the project. You can import an SBOM, just drag and drop the file. And uh, once it is successful, you will be able to see a short status here uh, with the name of the project that created, what were the releases created, packages created, what is reused and also the time taken and there's also some error reports that would uh, come. I will just show it in the uh, demo here. So once it is created uh, from a project view, this is how you could see it. Like the linked packages is what uh, you can say as the SBOM view as such and on the top license clearing would be based on the uh, linked releases. So it's like uh, we, we kind of created two views for two audiences in the company. So this view is for the developers so they get a complete understanding okay this is what I use and this is what I see in my project and once you go to the license clearing step that is what the compliance team looks at they know okay we just need to uh, clear these components and uh, the project goes into uh, the next stage so uh, the same view in, in, in so the component the first is the component the second is the release and within the release also you would see what all packages are uh, linked to that particular release. So this uh, kind of happens automatically and there is a possible uh, option possible for you to correct it manually if required. And in the package details page, uh, uh, currently you don't see uh, the part where you can capture vulnerability but the newer version has the ability to point your vulnerability assessment tool integrated to software 360 which would then display the vulnerability uh, per package if something is identified. And in future, Software 360's idea is to incorporate uh, open source vulnerability databases. So we are looking at uh, you know, vulnerable code and other options. So from, you know, like by default, there would be an open source based vulnerability monitoring tool integrated in Software 360. So right now, the module, uh, you know, we use the Siemens internal uh, tools to be integrated, but the idea is to uh, get the tracking right from the point of creation. So, I mean, uh, this you can refer in the slides later. The slides are uploaded in the uh, website, so you can see if you want more understanding on this. So I'll just uh, go ahead with the uh, demo. So here, I'm going to show you uh, import of an SBOM.
Okay, it's always a high risk, you know, when I try to do a demo live in an event. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's 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 worth the effort. I'm I'm too optimistic at times. So this is just a KT instance. No, no test instance. So don't assume the performance by seeing this demo. It's 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 just for the demo purpose. So for the Cyclone DX, I kind of you just drag and drop this, upload and import. Hopefully it should work. Yes, upload is successful. Importing of SBOM is in progress. No, it's like waiting for the launch of uh, you know SpaceX kind of you know we don't know what is going to happen. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'll come back to it because it will show the time of the input. So I can meantime I will show a sample which I have already uh, created. So here, uh, if you see uh, in the project view, in the attachments, automatically the imported SBOM would be attached and uh, 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 the status of the import would also be shown here. So it's a JSON file, so if you are integrating it in your CI CD pipeline, you know, your developers can access these documents uh, via REST API also. So right now what I'm showing is, how to do it from the uh, UI part. Uh, for all of these uh, features, REST API is available today. So you can directly integrate the creation, updation, everything uh, via CI CD. So another important aspect is uh, once you create this project and then there is an import SBOM from within the project. So this is where you can update the already created SBOM because there is a chance where new versions of the SBOM might happen you know, at different times. So you can re-import it here. Okay, so luckily it got created. So you know, uh, 741 releases were created from total 1,326 packages and it took 42 seconds for doing it from the UI. And um, it, it gives a clear indication about what information it doesn't contain because uh, all the packages were successfully created, but the packages uh, that did not have a VCS information is listed here. So this can be again sent for uh, enriching uh, because generally we don't, uh, we tend to, the, the plan is to enrich it prior to importing so that, uh, you know, we don't get this message. But for the co community version, like it is available and you can enrich and re-import it. So if you look at this, uh, if you look at this project, But I'm, yeah, test project for NPM. Okay, so this is our project. Oh, yes. So uh, you get a summary of, of, of uh, the basic information. And in the administration panel, uh, you can actually configure your uh, license header file. So this would be used for generating um, the readme document or notice files and uh, license clearing. So this is where uh, the input for the clearing team goes in, where we subject the source repositories for the license clearing. And as you s saw earlier, there was VCS information missing and hence no component were linked. Uh, we could do this uh, you know, later also as an update. Uh, so, yeah, so now you have seen the first bug in the, <laughs> in the demo, uh, the somehow the package information is not appearing, but you, you, you saw that in one, so this was my backup information here. So 
uh, this is how it works. So, granular view of uh, binary packages which are can be linked to their repositories and hence enabling both vulnerability monitoring and license compliance in a much more seamless way. So, that is all from the demo side and uh, yeah. So, the, the idea is to transform you know the, the perception that security and supply chain compliance how it appears to developers is mostly this way because I mean that is the developer on the wall and we want to change this perception where supply chain compliance would look like this for all developers. You know, we want to make developers so comfortable handling this knives. So yeah, I have uh, put the link to Phosology and Software 360. You can scan and join and if you like it, give it a star. Yes, we are open for questions. Since I did not find a user for software 360, that could be a reason that I do not have any, I don't, we are not having any questions. Yes, our first question there. I saw you import the Cyclone DX into the SW360. Yes. Does the s software 360 in um, support other format? Yes, yes. Uh, 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 the one, the demo that uh, Kokihama showed a few minutes earlier was the SPDX one. Yes. Yep. How about if a supplier deliver you uh, Excel files? Uh, we do have like offline, you know, uh, scripts that could do these inputs, you know, we utilize the REST endpoints to do that, but natively we do not have the Excel import feature configured yet. Okay. But, but you could, you know, do it with a script because we all have REST endpoints for all of these things. Mm. Um, I saw this software 360 has integrated with several scanning tools, uh, for example, ORT, for example, the Phosology. Um, I do not know if there are any use cases with a commercial scanning tool as well? Uh, the possibilities are there, of course, yes, because uh, we have not tested it with any anything because uh, if, if there is a, a common format agreed between the, your commercial vendor and, you know, which where you can utilize the rest endpoints, it should be possible. But right now, we have not uh, providing any support for any, 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 you know, proprietary vendor by default. But if, if based on usage, if you need it, I think it, it is possible to do it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I guess that is the end of our presentation and the question round. Thank you for your time and your patience in listening. Thank you. Thank you.